Hello and welcome back to Galata Studios here on my little YouTube page here. I'm David Galata and for today what I'm doing is I'm working on mammoth caves again only this time in unnatural colors. These are colors that had to do with my inspirations concerning the cave and as you can see this was a broad avenue called Audubon Avenue down in the caves and I saw it as, as, as very, very colorful and almost lit from within and I really wanted to capture my emotions at the time. So it looks like I've got a lot of purples and a lot of blues, including some pinkish colors in there. So it's a very icy and yet kind of like a cool warmth at the same time. Uh, it is true that the cave is always at around 55 degrees so it is a little chilly down there so maybe i was feeling it by then uh, this was one of the later paintings the avenue stretches out this is a huge place i mean you could string buses along here it's so wide i mean hundreds of people could fit in this and and you know plenty of room plenty plenty of room beautiful place to be so Thank you, Mammoth Caves National Park Service. You guys really made all this possible. So here I am taking my footnotes. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you an example of what these footnotes look like. As you can see, they're very sketchy notes that tell me what I saw at the time. Now that I'm back in the studio, I can now work on those notes and get things there we go hey that's a little better and finish it up using the footnotes as my guide as to what structures were there and how everything was layered and shadowed what textures were present so this was all done very loosely live in the cave and then brought back here to the studio so let's begin for today what i'm going to be using is some larger brushes i don't want to use small brushes today because i'm just laying in the first beginnings of what we're seeing here here's a, another piece i've been working on from mammoth cave this one's in natural colors that's part of my facebook live feed if you want check it out just look up my name david galata and on wednesday mornings at 10 a.m there i am uh, just doing a little live feed demonstration so now I'm doing this filmed demonstration of this. And I'm using oil. This is linen, stretched linen. Uh, the oil paints that I use are Old Holland, They're very old fashioned paints. I like them that way. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna start with some of the darks. I like to work with the darks. We're gonna go into some Prussian blue. Now these colors, unlike the natural colored ones, do have a touch of soft glow medium in them. These, I am not as concerned about capturing specifically the feeling of stone, though I want them to have that stone feel. But what I really want to do is I want to capture the emotions and the colors. So this can be glossy. Soft glow gives everything a bit of a semi-gloss and a touch of a jewel tone. So this will deepen the shadows and it will brighten the highlights and get these colors in very, very sharply, which is what I'm looking for here. Cause this whole thing just looks like it flows and flows. And I don't want to break that up. I want to, I want to keep that quality there. gonna get these deepest shadows in. I like getting that out of the way. Just to pull that in. Some shadows look deeper than others. Looks like there's like some almost like dashes through here. There were gaps in the rock created by water when there was a river running through here and that, that's what caused this cave was this massive underground river and it just wore away at the stone over time and created these beautiful shapes down there and sometimes the stone was not water soluble so it it held in there 
it didn't just give up and fall apart. It actually stayed in one piece. Yeah, see, and as you can see, I'm going to come in here and bring in some more of these shadows. But first, I want to get these, these deep, long lines in because they'll help with charting out where the composition of this painting is going. With the natural ones, I, I don't think of that as much. With these, I do focus on that more. It's simply because these have more of an emotional theme than a theme of, well, this is what the rock looked like. I still want to capture the general feel and look of the rock, but I also don't want to lose any of the emotional components of this painting. That's the very reason I'm doing it. No, don't want to lose that, right? No, we don't. I'm going to bring in a little shadow up in here just to show this was all in shadow. I'm just going to pull that in. Get all these shadows up here. Looks like I had a bit of ultramarine in there too, so I'll have to pull that out at some point and work on that. But right now I'm just trying to establish some of the main pieces here. Just get them going, looking at my footnotes. It doesn't have to do with my footnotes. I really don't want to be working with it right now. Pull that shadow in. And then later on, I'm going to take a look at this and make some decisions. You know, half the time I, I do sit back and watch these things and go, hmm, how's this going to go next? I'll look at the painting and make decisions on on colors and, you know, start working on completing the project. Start thinking about how I want this to be when it's done. And did I convey everything that I wanted to convey in this? Looks like we got some real darks here. But since these were closer, they're not as dark as the darks that we find up into the walls here. I am going to put a little bit of this dark in here, just a bit. I want to bring out that wall color. There we go. As you can see, I've got some issues here where some of the, the paint was not captured. That's okay. Yeah, not too bad. Alright, just a little bit. See, I just have a little bit on the brush here. So that's really handy for this spot, which is so brightly lit. And obviously this is not what the rocks look like. This almost looks like it's ready for small brushes. Hard to tell that when you're first starting. When you're getting ready to start a painting, you know, you figure you're going to start with the usual, you know, some, some heavier brushes and then you're going to work your way to smaller and smaller brushes. But it seems that in this case, that is not what's happening here. Oh, my microphone's giving me trouble. Please bear with me. A little more paint right here. Just going to sketch that in. Got this seam here where the, the rock of the ceiling met the wall. 
Looks like that was a very chaotic spot. Probably as things fell. There we go. All right. Now, I'm going to take this brush. I'm just going to wash it off real briefly here in my turpentine. I do use turpentine. I, I'm very old-fashioned that way. There we go. Now, I've tried, you know, Liquin and Gamsol and all that. I don't care for them. It's just how it boils down. Just how it boils down. I don't care for them. I want to get some of this because so I've got a lovely transparent red purple. Kind of get the floor here going into the shadows. Bring that color around. And then eventually I'm going to end up working with some lighter colors. There's some rocks over here. Looks like some tumbled down stones here, different types, different colors. It caught my eye. It's all from footnotes. This is going to be a very interesting challenge working with this piece. All right, I want to do the same thing here, right at that seam, right where the ceiling begins to appear. I just want to go from dark to light, so I got to get this dark color in and establish where one color starts and moves up into the light. And the ceiling had some very interesting details to it. Nice thing about transparent colors, you can still see the brush strokes through them. Let's take a look. Hey, okay? you can see it's beginning to get a little depth to it. And that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a little depth because that will help my eye make some judgment calls. And I don't even know how I'm gonna make them yet because I don't have this established. Don't have these darks properly established. So there we go, but I am following my little footnotes here. There, now we've got this ceiling with wrinkles in it, but the floor is much smoother. Now for that floor, I may as well go right ahead. And this time for, for today, I'm using titanium white. And if anyone has been following my uh, my Facebook and YouTube videos and by the way thank you for everyone who has subscribed to my YouTube I really appreciate it thank you so much and I also want to thank everyone who's been watching the Facebook page thank you thank you thank you uh, this wire is becoming a problem so that's all right we'll deal with it later Dave get back to work I'm gonna bring in a bit of this hot pink here and it's a little on the bright side I know it's very bold but I want to establish some areas of light here before bringing in the actual color so now we got these very dark darks these very light lights I'm gonna bring in some of this here I wanted the floor and the ceiling to have a similar color scheme While you don't find so much in land masses, you do find it out on the open water. And this piece is kind of celebrating the flow of water and stone. How they, they work together, how they flow together. So, I just want to establish some brights up there. Almost looks like clouds. That's always fun. Now, I want to get some of the pure magenta onto my brush. I'm not even wiping off the brush. There's no need. 
I'm just going to come in from here and I'm going to soften some of that very bright light area just a bit. I want to keep some of it. I just don't want all of it. There, and now we're just going to bring in these little bumps here. There, that's better, right? There we go. Ah, got some blue streaked across. All right. Now, easy enough to solve. We take our handy dandy rag. I'm going to put my brush down. There we go. And we're just going to wipe that off. Now I'm going to reestablish those colors. So, I'm going to wipe off the brush. Now I'm going to have to clean that one. Mmm. Yeah, that got really messy. There we go. That's better. There. So we'll get rid of that blue. I'm going to go back to this bright pink. Pull that in. Yeah, I can see where it was picking it up. There we go. Yeah, I actually like that better. That's good. Alright, now we're going to get back into the raw magenta. Just pull in some of the shadowing here. There. And now on these rocks. Pull in some of that. Got these big, big old boulders back here in magenta. Those fallen stones that just, and just pull them in. Shoom. Just like that. Yeah, I picked up that habit from Bob Ross. I, I, I blame him. I'm sure he wouldn't mind me blaming him for that. <laughs> One of the things he always loved was using little sound effects whenever he was working on some. He'd had these little, little, little sound effects. Always liked that. So I ended up doing the same. And now I can't seem to stop. So be forewarned before you pick up the habits of artists. Uh, sometimes they're pretty catchy. Put in some more indications of some of these purpley boulders back in here before it becomes more wall. A little bit right in there. There. Yeah, I like that. I like the way that, that looks. Kind of helps establish the edge here. Now understand, in this corridor, a human being would be about that big. <laughs> a little teeny tiny, that'd be the size of a human being. This place was huge, absolutely huge. It's just magnificent to see a cave like that, just sitting there in its grandeur. It doesn't care what we think of it. This was a cave with nothing to prove. A grand piece of nature. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Hope you do as well. There. All right, and I'm going to take this same color. Oops. Bring a touch of it up in here. And again, I'm going to follow my marks. Still kind of see some of the different areas back up there. And we're going to refine this as we go on. This is going to take weeks. Not days, not months. 
not years, but it will take weeks, maybe months. Maybe. I don't think so, though. I think this will go fast once I get to the uh, smaller brushes. I'm just going to you know, do the whole thing, just like that. Might even make that noise. You never know with me. All right, I'm going to start working on some of this blue. Now, one of the things with this blue is I want to establish these very bright, bright blues here. So I'm going to have to mix some King's Blue with some of this Titanium White. Oh, that's that was one of the things I was talking about, the Titanium White why I'm using titanium white, even though normally I don't like using titanium white. And that is because titanium white is cold. And I want the light of this painting to be cold. If I wanted warmer, I would use uh, Old Holland Jean Yellow, which is a bone white. And, or I would use flake white for a silvery white. But I want a very, very cold, cold color here. And for that, titanium white is best. I don't use zinc white as a rule, just because zinc has some problems. It, it, it can crack, it doesn't react real well with other paints. So I, I tend to avoid zinc white. I don't care who makes it. It's the chemical that I object to. Um, I object to that one more than I object to lead white, which is flake white. And it's just, you know, yes, flake white is dangerous. Yes, that is true. But it, it does have some beautiful purpose for painting. I just want to get these blocks of stone in that I marked down as being bright just these areas in here and I'm gonna make some decisions I'm gonna decide do I like the way that looks do I like what's happening in there or do I want to change that up and again the titanium white will help with that it'll make that much more possible. Just bring that in just a bit. All right, there we go. Just gonna wipe off the brush here a little bit and go back into my bright white blue. It's a Bright ice blue. I gotta think about lighting. That's gonna be a challenge. You know, I've got the shapes all in, but I gotta think about the lighting of this place. How will the lighting work here? Very interesting spots where I wanted the light to be. and rough and now we've established some light not so much up there all right now I've got to make some decisions here I don't want that light to be quite so bright so I'm actually going to go to a straight king's blue here just a straight king's blue I'm just going to put in the suggestion of some light just so I've got something to work with here there we go yeah that's much much better and now I've got something to work with
tumble down areas, crenellations. It was amazing, amazing how this place looked. Some tumbled stones back in there. Some bright spots in here. And here I'm just going with my footnotes and I'm making further footnotes just showing main masses based on what I was trying to tell myself in my selection of paint color choices and in where I placed brush strokes. There. And again, I don't want this area to get too bright. That would be very easy to do. Get too crazy with all this brightness. I don't really want to do that. But I do want to bring in the main general areas of where that brightness is taking place. Where is it happening? That's always a good thing to do when you're painting, because if you don't, you're going to lose track of everything you're trying to do. You're going to get lost, lost in the details. And oh, that's so easy to do. It's so easy to, to happen. Yeah, I think next, next week when I'm working on this, I'm going to work with a smaller brush because it's not a lot of colors. This is a very simple one in terms of the number of colors I've chosen to represent it. But I see a lot of details in there that need to come through. And that requires a smaller brush. All right, let's take a quick look. A little area here that needs to come in just a bit. Yeah, so from here I'm going to be able to make a lot of decisions as to what goes where. Now before I do that, I want to add a little bit of this beautiful Shevenigan blue or Thalo blue. I'm going to mix that in with some of the King's blue. A little bit of that brightest blue just to really bring it out make it electric. Just gonna bring that in, just like that. Really make it unique. Pull that into the depths here. Get it into these deep colors. There's no mistaking, this is its own place. This feature is different. it's not very often you get to work with some of these colors. At least I don't. I don't work with these terribly often. I enjoy them when I do. I'm taking full advantage of that. Making a very icy cold piece here. There we go. I just want the influence of that color in everything that I'm working on. feature with rocks. There we go. Bring that in. Get these little in-between spots. Make sure I understand the structure. separate this side from the other side. So I'm using that ice blue to do that. But I also don't want this to be without any ice blue. 
So it's got more of a bottle green look to it. I still want some of that blue at least looking like it's reflecting off the rocks. So we're just gonna put some of that in. I'm working very fast here. And this, this kind of layer you do, you, you work faster in some of these layers just because you're not ready to do details, but you're, you're looking at color and light and composition more. And you'll get to the details later. So you just gotta trust the process. And I do, I've done it enough times that I, I do trust the process. I know sometimes I'm always leaning over in, into it. Sorry, <laughs> back my head there. You can tell me how it's going back there. It's probably not doing too good, huh? <laughs> yeah, you just have a thick head of hair. That was long ago. There we go. All right. And there we have it, our beginning. This is the first actual layer of work after I've worked on the main footnotes. So let's take a quick look at what's happening here. I'm gonna bring this in so you can see what it looks like now. There we go. So now, this is what's happened. I've taken those footnotes and turned them into forms that I can then follow all the way through the painting. So we've gone from footnote to layer one of a painting. I hope that you have enjoyed this film and there will be more coming up next week on Wednesday. I'll be doing another YouTube video of this painting. I like putting them in sequence so you see how a painting is created. I think it's very interesting. I also like doing it in real time rather than speeding it up. Uh, let's, let's see what it is. Besides, I have lots to talk about. I'm always talking. So hopefully you all have a wonderful week. And from Galata Studios and myself, happy painting everyone and take care.